this chart is how you can classify numbers. All right, every type of number has a name, as in what type of number it is. Okay, now you have probably heard of whole numbers. You've probably heard of integers, rational numbers. Maybe that word was given to you in middle school. Numbers can also be real numbers. And my guess is you did talk about pi and being an irrational number when you were in middle school. All right, now this overall picture, this classification, this chart we use to classify our numbers, all right, is called a Venn diagram. You probably have done Venn diagrams in your English class, okay, to organize your concepts. Now, the way this works, I wrote underneath the bottom of the chart, start on the inside most part of the chart and work your way out, okay? So what you're gonna do, we're gonna give you numbers and then you're gonna have to classify them and decide, well, what type of number is it? All right, so I might give you, say, a negative three, all right? So you're gonna go to the inside most part of this side of the chart, all right? This says natural numbers and it shows you one, two, three, four, five, dot, dot, dot. So would a negative number be in here? Yes. No. All right, then the next big circle going out, working its way out, is whole numbers. The only difference here is now in the whole number group, we've added zero, all right, but we didn't add any negative numbers, so it's not gonna fall here, all right. Then the next circle out is integers. Would a negative number fall in here? Yeah, see, they give you some samples there, all right, so that's where it is. So what I say, negative three. So a negative three can be called an integer, a rational number, and a real number because you'll work your way out the chart. So it's got three names. A negative three is an integer, a rational, and a real. Okay? Now, sometimes your questions that will actually write out the words rational, real, integer, whole number, but other times you will see questions with these capital letters. All right? Because upper level math classes, they don't want to write out natural numbers every time, so they're going to use a capital N. Whole numbers is denoted by a capital W. Integers is a capital Z, because it kind of has to be, because if we're going to let the irrational numbers be an I, I can't have two of the same letter, okay? Rational numbers are a Q, and then real numbers are what's called a double bar R, and that's not necessarily the best type version for a double bar R, but it was about the only thing I could get on my computer to type it. I'm going to handwrite a double bar R. So literally it's called a double bar R, which means it's going to have two bars and then an R like that. Okay, so real numbers, like when I handwrite it, if I were to handwrite it, I would do a double bar R like that. I typed it like this. All right, in, in our formative, you know, it, it could look like this, it could look like this, a little bit different. They might even italicize those numbers, but you're going to do, in the formative that you're going to do here in just a minute to practice some of these, well, no, I guess you won't practice these questions today. We're going to practice these questions um, in class today, but then you'll practice them on Monday. Um, you're going to see the letters, all right? So again, you don't have to memorize this because this chart's going to be in your notes, all right? Now, let's uh, say we had do a square root of 5, all right? So I would always start over here, okay? Square roots in this first one? Are there square roots in the first one? No. Are there square roots in the next one? No. Are there square roots here? Yes, but you have to be careful. Square root of 49, we know this from middle school. What's square root of 49? 7, all right? I gave you square root of 5. Can you do square root of 5 in your head? Well, it's not exactly 2.5, but it's going to be a decimal that's 2 point something, something, something. Yes, but that decimal is going to go on forever and ever and ever. It's not considered a, a perfect um, square root. Now, are there square roots anywhere else no. on the paper? Yeah, it's going to be irrational because look over here. There's square root of 3. Did I give you square root of 5? I said square root of 5. All right, square root of 3, we can't do in our head. We would need a calculator. It would give us a decimal. Square root of 2, we can't do in our head. Calculator would give us a decimal. So square roots that you cannot do in your head are considered irrational. Now we work our way out the chart. So if it's irrational, it's also real. So square root of 5 would be irrational real. 
Okay, if I asked you pi, do you see pi anywhere in the chart? Yeah, pi is over here, right? So pi is also irrational. Why? It's a decimal that goes on forever and ever and ever. So I work my way out. Pi can be called irrational and real. Okay, so square roots over here have to be perfect square roots, ones that you can do in your head. Square root of 36 is 6. Square root of 25 is 5. Okay, so anytime you can do it in your head, then those would be over here, and those square roots would be integers, rationals, and reals. All right, now on the bottom of this handout, all right, are some examples that are already done for you. And down here, you know, here's the example, here's the number, negative 7, here's the answer. So what you could do is on your, you know, independently as you are studying this, try the number, go up, look, and then check the answer. Don't look at the answer ahead of time. Now, the way I wrote these answers was I used the word and I used the letter, okay? So probably when you start seeing these in class, informative, or whenever we start using Math Excel, you're probably just going to either see the words or you will just see the letters. They won't give you both, all right? But there's one, two, three, four, five, five different examples down there. All right, and like I said, the chart does not have to be memorized, okay? You just have to know how to use it. All right, as a check for understanding, where do we start in the chart? Where do we start in the chart? Chloe, you look like you were going to say something. Um, I don't want you to, to say natural numbers, but yes, I did start you here every time. Give me a more general way to say that. I start on the... Inside, the farthest most inside of the chart, which is going to be here, we work our way out. If you start over here and you go all the way out and you can't find the number of o at all, then you got to come over here. You start here. This is also an inside portion of the chart working its way out. So here working your way out, here working your way out. Okay, so pretty simple. 